Howdy there YouTube. This is a new project. It's inspired by Mr. Stuart Semple's Black 2.0 paint. When I saw it on the market, I watched his video and then I watched some other people use it and I was pretty impressed with the effect that you get from it. And I started to think, well, I've got this rifle that needs repainting. I just kind of blacked it out. And I put this decal on the back and a little bit more about that in a minute. But I decided, you know, I'm going to make my own camouflage. I've been doing some custom camouflage patterns for a while now. And I want to kind of translate it to a more uh, curved surface. I've been doing flat panels to test out the patterns. So this is going to be kind of my first curved surface attempt. But I think I got it down pretty good. And this is going to be basically four colors, although it'll actually be about five colors. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a dark brown earth on the bottom and then it's going to fade up to a light tan prob probably even almost white up here on top and so that'll be the background for it and then this is the pattern this is the a b plus the holes and so but these holes are going to be the stuart simple black 2.0 and then the cutout ones on this pattern are the A's, and then this is the B's, and then this is the, the C pattern, even though it's just holes. But I need to have a template to align everything, otherwise once the pattern's on the gun, it won't all line up. So the premise for this is, is that these holes then will make it appear like there's holes in here, and you won't be able to discern exactly what this is once this is all applied. Now I haven't quite figured out what colors I'm going to paint everything, although I have decided on the background. And I know what color the holes are going to be. They're going to be black 2.0, and that's going to be these guys. So it should be a fairly complex pattern, so it should be pretty distracting. Like I said, I'm not really sure how this black 2.0 paint works, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint the gun, then I'm going to take a bunch of pictures and video, and then probably end up going to matte clear coat it. I know it ruins the effect of the 2.0. That's why I want to take a bunch of pictures and videos. But I'm gonna, you know, I've already spent a lot of time and effort getting these patterns made, and it's gonna take me a while to airbrush and everything. The paint on here, so once it's on there, I kind of want to preserve it. And I know I could make it, you know, have the wear and everything, but I'm gonna be using fairly cheap paints as a, you know, besides that. So that's fine to use cheap paints, but you're going to need something to lock in that color. Otherwise it'll, it'll be, uh, you know, it'll volatile, just disappear on you. But I've done some masking on here, just some minor masking. I kind of want to paint the whole thing. I wanted to do the bolt too, but I don't know. I think I might just one color the bolt with a really thin coat of paint. So then this decal, what I'm going to do, I was going to just take it off, but I think the coolest thing to do would be to apply the entire camo, then come back and peel this off. So then I'll have a black hummingbird underneath the paint. So when the camouflage is done, there'll be a black hummingbird there visible. So I think that's what I'm going to do with that rather than just pulling it off of there. Cause I could easily just do that. But I think when this is done, it'll be really cool. I have some accessories and stuff that I usually use on it, but I'm really kind of, I don't really want to paint those. It's, you know, I don't know. I could, I suppose. But this is going to be tough enough, and it's going to definitely prove the concept, because really all I'm doing is testing my pattern ability and com pattern conformability and this paint. That's really what I kind of want to test out. I got some other ideas too, but this one seemed like it would be kind of fun, because... If this all goes right, it should appear that there's holes in this all over the place that are missing. And I'm not sure that might end up being a visual attractant, which is kind of a opposite of what I'm trying to accomplish here. But if it proves my artistic idea, then it'll be worth it and it really doesn't matter anyway. So I'm going to go ahead and put um, Stuart Semple's link up here for the paint because I'd like to thank him personally because without him none of this would be possible. You know, locking away knowledge and, and content in an ivory tower really doesn't help anyone, even the person that's doing the locking away. And you find that a lot in like private collections and stuff of different things, you know. 
no one gets to see any of it until the person dies. And that's not fair because those people have all the knowledge on where it came from and what it was and all that gets lost once they pass away. So stay tuned here and I will get to work. This is going to take a while so you're probably seeing this a long time after this video gets published. I mean, yes, and a long time after I film this. You get the point. Anyway, stay tuned. It's a little wet still over here, but I think this is going to be my base coat. This is what it's going to look like, the base coat underneath the camo. I think that's probably going to be good. Now I uh, learned this, well, learned this from Ryan at Bloodshot Studios over at Bloodshot Airbrushing. I'll look a card up here kind of name drop in this episode but he's really helpful if you like uh, want to learn how to do airbrushing he's definitely the man to learn from and his lessons are free and they're really good so I definitely suggest you check him out because I am not good this is I would say probably my third attempt at anything so don't expect greatness from my airbrushing technique but the stencils will turn out great. I guarantee it. Or I'll just keep doing it until it does. Alright, well, I think I've got this side pretty well done. Except for I'm going to go back with a paintbrush and fill this in. I was able to shoot the Black 2.0 through the airbrush. I had to thin it out quite a bit. So I did lose a lot of the effect. But I think what I'm going to do is take a paintbrush and go back in 100% 2.0 over these areas because they kind of got faded out by painting over the camouflage and I noticed that this rail kind of I lost a lot of the definition on this whole area right here but that's okay the other side will look better and some of my stenciling uh, the end piece right here is kind of cockeyed so I just ended up taping it down so all in all I think it turned out pretty good um, well, now that my camera won't focus, there we go. Um, so I think I'll do step by step on the back side to kind of show you how I did it. Um, you, sh you saw the gradation for the background. And I originally had these white, and then I painted over with this tan color. It was just too bright with the white. It wasn't, it's not white, it's parchment, but it, it pops white so I didn't really want that it looked kind of neat but it was kind of urban camo looking and that's not really the effect I was going for in this area here I could probably have used another one of this set in here somewhere but it kind of looks cool like stripes and I did leave it so it's kind of white on top and then dark on the bottom so We'll see how the other side turns out, and then, like I said, I'll go back and fill in this black 2.0 so it gets more of the effect. So, once again, a little while for you, probably quite a bit of time for me. Okay, here we are on to side two. We'll go step by step on this one. So I've got my circle template taped down as well as I can to get it to conform to the curvature. It's not going to be perfect, of course, because it's curved and this is flat. But it works out pretty well. You get a fairly good definition, especially down here. Now with this rail section missing, I'm really interested to see the definition uh, pick up. So I'll, I've got my mixed black here, 2.0. I've got my airbrushes. I'm probably going to use this bigger one. This is a, a 0.5, I think, and this is a 0.3. So I use this for big stuff and this for little stuff. Neither one of them is very good. They're the kind of Chinese Iwata knockoffs and they kind of suck. But for just laying down over templates, they're great. Fine. Well, not great. Fine. So I'll put some black dots on here and we'll go to the next step. Now with dots. So here's it. here it is with the stencil removed, dots applied. Um, it takes a little while 
for this black 2.0 to dry. I lay it on fairly thickly with the airbrush. I just keep making small circles and covering it, covering it, covering it until I can start to see these little puddles forming. And then once they're dry, you're ready to move on to the next step. Another quick note, it kind of looks neat as this, uh, I don't know, cheetah, jaguar looking pattern. So The different stages actually look really neat just by themselves. I mean, you could stop at any point here and have a really cool effect, but as you saw, I think the completed version, even though it's very busy to the eye, it is a more effective camouflage than doing something like this. This is just kind of looks neat. And if you spaced out the dots properly, you know, it would look even neater. Okay, dots are dry and we're ready for our A, even though it's really B, seeing as the dots should be A. Anyway, so this is what I use on the other side. So for this side, all I'm going to do is flip it over. Lay it on here. Now, there's reference marks it are these little dashes that go through the circles. So when you line these up, these dashes should, and this one goes around the circle, so that's a good index to get it to where you want everything to line up. Because if you don't get these lined up, you'll end up messing it up because these are non-overlapping camouflage patterns, meaning that these spaces in here are filled by the next pattern. So it's really easy to line everything up because if you don't have any kind of alignment thing, I've done this a bunch of times, if you don't have any alignment between the patterns the they don't line up and it'll end up looking really weird I mean if that's what you're trying to do that's fine but that's not what I'm trying to do I want my other pattern to fill in these empty spots so just a little word of advice there if you're making these patterns and on a related note I got some scratches here on the other side from when I had it laid down and uh, that's not really going to be a problem here because of the way that I've designed this camouflage pattern to fill in all these spaces. There's very little of the background left. So all these little scratches that occur when you're messing around with it, they're not really of any consequence. Because they'll be covered up by multiple layers of other paint. So here we are with the parchment applied. And you can see it pops really well, but it's a little bright. I am getting some pretty decent wraparound though. I wasn't expecting to get any, but there is some. Not so much down here. So I'm going to go ahead and do the pavement green next, and then I'll go back and do the pattern shift for the white, like I did on the other side. So once again, this appears to be a mistake, but since I'm going to be doing a pattern shift, this is all going to be covered. So these little mistakes aren't really going to be a problem later on. Some of these blowouts though aren't so great, but it is a camouflage, so it doesn't have to be precise. It doesn't have to be super crisp. Some of these are really hard to get around. I would have to make a contoured stencil just for this area, and that would be very complicated, especially since I'm reversing the pattern. So this will be good enough. Okay, so this is the next pattern. But the thing to remember is, is if you've laid this out right, you shouldn't see any white unless you've had blowouts on your pattern. And that helps you align everything. So these other paints I'm using are these cheap Walmart 50 cent paints. And uh, I thinned them according to the video I saw online. But they need more thinning. You, What I do is I put a little bit of water in the cup. And then I end up putting my thinned paint in there and then mixing it up. I put water in first because if you put the paint in first it clogs up the nozzle. A little trick. Okay so I've got a little bit of gray with the green and what I do is I check the pigment on the, the stir stick here. And these are just the little kebab bamboo skewers and if, it, if it's got enough pigment then I call it good because it's runny enough. So here it is with the green and I got a little bit of a shift on my pattern. Didn't line up as good as it did on the other side. Not quite sure why that is. But it's still wet. It'll dull out. So it'll be interesting to see. So now the next step will be to pattern shift this initial A slash B with uh, probably I'll do the same as the other side, which will be a tan mixed with brown 
with a little bit of pavement. So here's the difference in color from one side to the other. So it's almost dry, but I thought I'd uh, just kind of explain some of the problems behind making smaller patterns, because that'd be the easier way to do it. You'd get a more consistent result if you made a small template. But the problem with that is, is, is the second that the pattern repeats itself, your eye will grab right onto it. And I'll show you, and I've tried several sizes, and it doesn't even really matter how big the template is. If you have more than one stacked together, you're going to see that pattern. And I'll show you exactly what I mean. So this is a filing cabinet that I started kind of doing these patterns on. It's actually on all sides but I've got stuff in there and it's pushed against the wall. Anyway, so you can see how even though this is a very chaotic pattern and there's multiple colors involved, as soon as there is a repetition of the design, your eye grabs right onto it. And it doesn't matter how big the pattern is, you're still going to see that. And then I've got another one here on this side. Step around the junk here kind of a different take on it but same thing as soon as the pattern is repeated your eye is immediately drawn to the repetition of the pattern it's not as bad on this one but it's still noticeable especially at a distance it's a good camo pattern but it's just the repetition of the templates is a problem and it doesn't matter how big or small you make them you're still gonna run into that so that's why I made the other ones on the rifle one piece with just already cut in pattern. Okay, so I'm ready to lay my pattern shift here. And whichever way you're going to shift it, whether it be this way or this way, just make sure that it's a consistent shift on all of your thing. Because this thing moves around. It's pliable. So just make sure that if you're going to shift it one direction or the other, make sure that it's consistent because you don't want it to have various angles of light well simulated light as the case may be okay so this is wet still of course I just sprayed it on there you can see the pattern shift I kinda went a little too far back here you'd like it to be a little closer but the kind of the beauty I think of this is that I can just use the paints of course I did custom mix some of these um, but of course I can just match them but I can use the paints to go back and touch up any of these issues like this didn't get fixed unfortunately and there's some scraping from the taking it off but I like to take the stencil away while it's still wet because sometimes if you put it on real heavy it'll stick and then you, it'll just tear the whole thing off so I'd rather go back and kind of fix anything where it's stuck particularly areas like that where it's missing paint right here I can just take a paintbrush and just touch that up and like I said I'm going to go back and redo the black 2.0 spots so that it's really really dark and then I'll go and do some detail work with just a paintbrush focus I said focus there you go and I'll do some detail work and hopefully make this thing look pretty darn awesome it looks okay like this but I think with just a little bit of hand painting I can really make this thing pop so once again a long cut for me shortcut for you all right well I've got my first bit of hand painted first coat anyway I think I'm gonna do two coats but it's looking pretty good it needs to dry all the way and then I'll go back I think probably and touch up these other colors I hate to do it I'd really like to just leave it but there's some spots that need some help but so far so good now the other side turned out a lot different and I think that's because of the registration of the pattern wasn't as good on this side as well as there was some degradation to the pattern itself this uh, is just a poster board so once it gets wet it gets weird and so I think that's what happened I'm going to chalk it up to that anyway. So, once again, another cut, some more painting. Okay, so I've flipped it over now, and I've done the 
second coat of the black 2.0 on this side. And it's hard for me to see, but it'll be easy for you to see because of the way the video is going to be put together. But this side turned out a little bit different. Just a little bit different. Not better or worse, just different. Although the definition on this side turned out a lot better because it was the first use of the of the stencil. So there's that. Okay, well I guess I better take one last look around because it's never going to look as good as it does right now. So slow pan, well, not very that not really that slow. But what I'm going to do now is try to pull this hummingbird sticker off of here. So hopefully that goes well. No, it's not coming off. So I'm just going to leave it on there. So I'll probably just go ahead and um, pull off the masking and put the bolt in, take some pictures, and then I'll do some clear coating, which will ruin it probably for the most part. But I want to kind of keep it preserved. I think it looks pretty cool. So I'll take the masking off, put it back together, and we'll see what it looks like. Okay, so looks pretty good out here. Uh, it's springtime, so mostly everything's green. Luckily, I sprayed here along the fence, so got some tan. To... This is kind of the natural color of things most of the year. So looks like it works pretty good. Not too shabby. Even in the green, it's not too bad. Not great. It's definitely meant for the the tan. And so, I think I'm going to call it good. Probably not going to clear coat it. I can always just paint it again. Maybe with a different pattern. But it turned out pretty good. I'm really happy. I like this Stuart Semple 2.0 block. Thank you very much for developing that on your own. So, it goes on really well. Um, there's lots of pigment, so it sticks very well. There's lots of good, It's really well at covering. So it doesn't take a lot, it just very little paint goes a long way with the 2.0. And these Walmart paints, even though they're only 50 cents, I mean, looks pretty good. It's going to wear, but that's kind of what you want. And it, you didn't get, I didn't get too much wrap around on the top, but that's okay. Like I said, it's mostly tan around here anyway, so I could probably have just painted the whole thing solid tan and been good. And then on this side with the green, I think that does add a little bit to it and having the uh, the offset pattern kind of gave it kind of a cool like snakeskin effect that I didn't get on the other side so all in all completed project happy with it really uh, nothing more to say so if you have any comments or questions feel free to put them down below other than that I will see you next time